Now let's discuss in more detail the demodulation and the recovery of message one and message two. So first, let's consider the signals X1 and X2. X1 and X2 are uh, signals where we have demodulated the QAM signal by multiplying by either a cosine wave or a sine wave. So let's start first by considering the X1 signal, which we hope to demodulate into a uh, equation where we can see that we will arrive at having just the message one as a single term in an equation of X1. So let's start with X1, and this is the, the QAM signal being demodulated by a cosine wave. We'll substitute in the QAM signal to get this. We will simplify by distributing to this. Now we have a few terms that we, uh, including one uh, with a cosine squared term. So let's consider the double angle identities that we see below so that we can simplify this even further. By applying the double angle identities, we will arrive at this equation. Then distributing message one throughout, we will arrive at this. And as we can see, we have a signal x1 of t and one of the terms contains the message one by itself and the two other terms are message one and message two signals and they're being uh, multiplied by uh, cosine and sine waves at frequency at the same frequency of two omega c <clears throat> now let's think about what this might look like in the frequency domain and if we just were to guess, right, we can see that the message one term, those are going to be low frequency signals. And the message one and message two that are being multiplied by the cosine and sine waves are going to be at frequencies of um, two FC. So this is probably going to look something like this, where we have a signal X1, and there is going to be some low frequency components that contain the original message, as well as some high frequency components. And just like many of the things that we did before, we can see that if we just pass this X1 through a low pass filter, we would be able to recover our original message.